Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the first ever edition, yes that's right, your number one issue of CryptTube Discussions. My name is Jonathan and the first topic that I want to get into right off the get-go is a Tales from the Crypt video game. Yeah, that's right, you heard it. A Tales from the Crypt video game. Now this game was originally going to be made on the PC, you know, CD-ROM era back in 95, 96, back when Tales was just getting ready to end. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a little bit of history going into this project. Um, not many fans know about this. Um, a couple of other fans who are really hardcore dedicated to the, to the franchise and the series um, have come across pictures or in some way have come across a website um, that references the video game. The game was created by a 3D designer named Jim Ludka. Now, if any of you back in the day were playing PC games heavily and you ever came across a game called The Residence, then you obviously know his work. The guy was very innovative and he was way ahead of his time when it came to designing 3D games for PC. And he was very, very creative. Now, I wanted to get in contact with Jim Lucka in order to get more information about the game. Unfortunately, uh, Jim Lucka passed away in 2004. Um, so, unfortunately, we won't be able to get that information regarding re- coming from him regarding the game. Uh, rest in peace to Jim Lucka and, you know, uh, prayers go out to his family. Now, I was able to get information from another person who was a head artist on the game. His name is Mike Vosberg. Now, if some of you don't know who Mike Vosberg is, Mike Vosberg is the sole artist responsible for every single Crypt cover that you see within the Tales series or the films. So when you watch that, when you watch those episodes and you watch those films, that's Mike Vosberg's work. He's done plenty of other work aside from Tales, and you know he's worked with Marvel and DC before. He's done art for Starfire. Uh, he's all Archer and Armstrong. He's also done artwork for She-Hulk, the Mad Mummy. So if you haven't seen any of those other pieces of art, you know definitely check him out. He has amazing, amazing artwork. But let's get into the whole nitty gritty of the situation, shall we? Now, through an associate of mine, Steve CK, shout out to you, buddy, uh, from the Tales from the Crypt fan group on Facebook, he sent me Mike Bosberg's email because this dude purchases a lot of Bosberg's artwork. He has a plethora of Bosberg's cover art from Tales. Now, he sent me his email and then um, I decided to do a little bit more digging into this whole video game situation because I remember s- specifically that there was a uh, video game being worked on back in the day. Now what I'm going to show you are a series of screenshots that were directly from Mike Bosberg himself from when he worked on this game along with screenshots of the Crypt Keeper design for the animation, for the 3D animation that was supposed to be for like the intro for every single, uh, I guess I guess you could call it episodes within the game. Now I want to start off with the uh, Crypt Keeper animation, and as you can see here, this is absolutely amazing. This is way ahead of its time for what CD-ROMs could produce uh, in terms of gaming with animation back in back in those days. This was supposed to be released back in, I believe, 95, 96. And man, this looks amazing for what it was supposed to uh, look like back in those times. Now in this first screenshot, we see the Crypt Keeper in 3D mode, ready to pull us in for our dead time stories and give us our feel of murder, madness, and mayhem. However, in this second screenshot, we also see a change in scenery. Now, I- I'm obviously gonna think that this is the, the Crypt. However, it looks a little bit different as, as opposed to what it looks like in the series, in the films. Now, I'm not sure if the game was supposed to have him be in a different area of the of the house that he lives in maybe a different part of the crypt who knows but uh it, it definitely looks like a change in scenery now he also seems to be obviously he's uh bringing us in for the the first episode of the of the game however uh if you look at if you look at what's on the table it's obviously a comic issue but it looks like the the issue is referencing maybe some comic art from the actual comic book series which leads me to believe that this game was going to adapt more tales from the from the comic book series however when we move into uh the actual in-game shots that mike bosberg sent me it's completely different i even went out of my way to ask the crypt keeper himself john kassir if he had ever done voice work on this project and he confirms it with sure do 
was ahead of its line. Sad, it never saw the light of Slay. Now, I just want to reiterate that this is all artwork coming directly from Mike Vosberg himself. Uh, color credit goes to John Ott. And I, I just want to say right now that I am extremely thankful for the fact that this man gave me the opportunity to share these photos with you. Because, again, this is a game that we could have had a, a while back and something that we could have enjoyed back in the 90s. Uh, even to this day, if you're still a, a hardcore fan or just a fan in general. Looking at these screenshots. Okay, now see, if you're a hardcore Crypt fan and you know your episode guide. Now, just looking at these pictures, you could instantly get a, like an inkling of some kind of Corman's Calamity type deal going on here. We see the artist drawing... I guess like a, a new comic book or he's drawing panels right now and you know will we see his cat I'm guessing that's his cat who's just like overlooking the whole situation and just hanging out with him and we see him you know drawing and sketching and painting and for some reason um, he seems to be a little bit more concerned with what he's drawing and I don't know it seems as though like he's very um, surprised by what happens when he draws almost as if the things that he's drawing are coming to life in some shape or fashion. It's almost as if this character is Jim Corman from Corman's Calamity. However, this tale seems to have its own unique spin for the game. Whereas we had the television version and then we had the comic book version. So now we have a video game version of what Corman's Calamity would have been uh, based on the synopsis of what the game was going to be. I mean, we have no idea, but I'm going to try to put the pictures together in a chronological order to try to make sense of what the synopsis would have been for the game uh, or this uh, situation here. Now, October 31st seems to be a very significant date for, let's just call him Jim, and it's probably a due date for the, the artwork panel that, he, that he's working on. Maybe he has to hand that in for publishing, for the comic book to be created. Um, maybe it's an anniversary. Maybe it's something that's uh, very um, significant to him. No idea, but it, it's, it's it could be a... It could be many things. However, uh, now now we get to the next panel, and then we see um, him just drawing at his desk and whatnot. We see a whole bunch of comic books on the left side, and you know he's just drawing, and his cat's observing him and just watching. And then at some point, he's drawing again in another panel, and his cat's just you know on the table, getting you know all that attention and love from Jim. And at some point, while Jim is sketching, he's sketching, uh, I believe it's a rabbit and a duck with axes in their hands, and they seem to be enjoying themselves and having a good time with those axes in their hands um then we move to the next screenshot and jim does not look too excited he looks very shocked and he's he has this really really intense expression on his face like he doesn't believe what the hell is happening to him or you know what's happening on on his uh on his canvas and at some point we see him shoot back like he like he's scared he has no idea what the hell just happened and he's frightened by by what's popping up on his panels then uh we see another screenshot of yes you guessed it the old witch and the vault keeper on his panel now i'm not sure if this is because he's drawn it or if they just somehow popped up on it but they are staring at him intensely and giving him very, very evil smirks. Like, very malicious smirks. Like, they have something planned for him. And, you guessed it, at some point, you know, we all know what Corman's Calamity does. And, at some point, they come to life. And, they appear right behind him, wielding an axe. Just like the bunny and the, the, uh duck had in their hands and old witch is pointing at jim and she is she is laughing her head off while the vault keeper takes that axe and buries it in jim's forehead and once once that panel ends we move to the next to the next screenshot and then we see that same screen that that same shot of jim's head with the axe buried in it and all of a sudden he actually appears in the same artwork panel that he drew it's almost as if it was like a reverse Corman's Calamity deal where the moment he dies he becomes a piece of artwork now if you want to get an in-depth look at these screenshots he has told me that he's going to be uploading these on his Vox Comics blog in the next couple of weeks 
So if you're not already following or subscribed to his blog, please do so. That way you can keep track of the latest updates and check out when the photos are uploaded. But let's get to it, guys. All right. So in the email, uh, I asked him, you know, what happened? You know, who was responsible for the fallout of this game? And, you know, what happened? Like, like, what was the cause of it? And I, I will quote him as such verbatim. And, you know, I will also provide the screenshot of what he wrote to me. Can't remember the names of any of the folks I worked with. The company was owned slash run by a very nice couple. I do remember he had some serious health issues at one point. I believe it was the parent company who decided to sell just before the game was finished. Apparently, they felt there was a chance of recouping their monetary output. Whoever bought the company immediately declared bankruptcy, so the sale was obviously a business deal done to create a tax loss that would bring some bring someone more money than the sale of the game. Only heard these particulars secondhand. Somewhere, if I can ever locate them, I might have a couple of this with some of the CGI stuff on it. I will be, you know, sorry, it will be a while, probably a long while, before I get a chance to look for that. So there you have it, guys, right there. So the original company that was creating and designing the game was bought out by another company, and right before its completion and distribution, the company immediately declared bankruptcy and created a tax loss. Now, that is just insane. This stopped and halted the entire production of this game. And it never saw the light. It never saw the light at all. And it's a shame too because like they were just wrapping up. According to Mike, they were wrapping up this game. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, the, the company that, was, uh, that, that bought out the original company just said no that's it we're, we're done you know and you know scrap this game it's, it's not gonna happen that that is just that's ridiculous but um aside from that uh from the bottom lines um where mike mentions that he might have a couple of this with the cgi stuff on it now i'm not sure if he's talking about screenshots of the cgi or perhaps there's a little bit of uh, video footage of what was gonna be in the game perhaps Crypt Keeper intros and outros perhaps uh, a little bit of video footage of the in-depth gameplay uh, perhaps uh, some of the cinematics we don't know um, and I'm, I failed to ask Mike you know if he knew what was probably on those those discs if he did have them but um, he has mentioned that he's going to uh, be on the lookout for those and in case he does find them he's going to let me know and inform me that way I can uh, post it for you guys. Now, I want to get back into the main story for a second where Mike mentions uh, an unfortunate incident between the company and the people involved in producing the game. Um, he tells me that when the company declared bankruptcy, the people involved in creating this game were stiffed and they were not paid for their work. You know, see, it's one thing when the game that you work so hard on and you know you put so much time and effort into is scrapped that's one thing it's like you're it's like you're losing a job basically in a way but it's another thing where you do not get paid for any of that hard work that hard work that you put time and effort into is now just being shrugged off and just put to the wayside and you're not collecting a check for that work that's that's just a whole nother level of unacceptable and it's a shame that this kind of thing happened because, you know, if it wasn't for the bankruptcy, this game would have been put out and then those people would have gotten their earnings for their hard work. But now they, they get nothing. They don't even get a mention of, you know, this project that they were working on. They don't even get any sort of credit to the work that they put into. And it's just a shame that this kind of thing happened. You know, aside from the game not being put out, you know, that, that that's one thing. But ultimately, these people don't even get any sort of recognition or acknowledgement for their work. And, and that's just terrible. So there it is, guys. That's all the information I have on Tales from the Crypt, the video game. Now, perhaps in the future, if we can ever get some more information, more screenshots or more gameplay footage, we can find that shovel and dig this game out of the dirt. I just want to give a shout out to Mike Vosberg and John Ott for these images. These are tremendous contributions to this video and I couldn't have done it without your help. Thank you for all the information. I'd also like to thank my fellow Crypt fans from the Facebook fan group. 
especially Steve C.K., who provided me additional images of the game that he got from Mike Bosberg, Ian Barber, and Eric Fidra. This video wouldn't have happened without you guys. Thank you for your support, all of you. And I'd like to give one final thank you to John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. Thank you for all the scares. If you Crypt dedicated fans haven't already hit the subscribe button yet, please do so now. And make sure you turn on the notification bell. That way, when our new video gets uploaded, you'll be able to watch it anytime, anyplace, anywhere. Y'all have a good night and pleasant screams.